Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the chairpersons this evening. <clears throat> Can we thank uh, MP Khadija Amin <laughs> and MP Dave Tanku who chaired our proceedings? Can we thank all the powerful speakers who are here tonight? Give them a round of applause. All parliamentarians, all chairmen, councillors of the various corporations, all the incoming members of the new UNC. Now, Texas, give them a round of applause again. They are now duly sworn in as the national executive. We welcome specially the crew with Mr. Jackman from OWTU. Let us thank them. They have been giving us tremendous support and very happy that they could join us today. All UNC members, to all the thousands of viewers and listeners, join us tonight via our live stream and our broadcast. I want to say special thanks to the elections management team. Yes, yes. Yes. Mr. Darrell Alaha, Dr. Alan Sami, and Ms. Marilyn Martin. They worked through that process Today, a democratic exercise in our great party. And whilst there were concerns during the day itself, prior to it, several concerns and queries, there has been no complaint filed in any court of law. and means that that committee carried out their work fairly, without fear or failure, fearlessly, without fear or favor. So Daryl and team, we thank you very much for your hard work. And I told him, you know, um, he had called one day to make some uh, queries. And I said to him, well, you know, don't worry. You know, those people who work in the police stations, we feed them. He said, what? I said, we also pay them. He said, what? But nobody feeding us and nobody paying us. Let's thank him for his work that he did gratis for us. <laughs> and to all of you, we say we are UNC and proud. I want to pick a moment of your time to pay tribute to our brother, Lloyd Williams. He was a founding member of our great party, and he was the first PRO of our party. I think Wade Marks and do remember him very well. Um, today was his funeral. One of UNC's founding fathers, our great UNC's first PRO, Mr. Lloyd Williams. I pay special tribute here tonight to this great member of our party, a great soul of son of the soil, and a truly remarkable soul. Tonight I say, great UNC founding member, our dearly departed, we love it, Lloyd. Thank you for your service to our great party and our nation. May your soul rest in eternal peace, and may the UNC members always be inspired by your great legacy. I heard one of our MPs and I talking about the, shoulder, the shoulders of those who came before us. Lloyd was one of those. As we extend deepest condolences to your family members, your loved ones, on behalf of the UNC, myself, and my family, we express condolences and may the good Lord keep and bless you in the time of your grief. Can we give Lloyd, late Lloyd, a round of applause for his service to our group party? I thank you. Tonight, I want to talk to our UNC membership with a spirit of gratitude and love. For the sixth consecutive time in our party's internal election history, you have elected the star slate as your incumbent Natex. Give them a round of applause and we congratulate the star team. Since 2010, 2010 when I first led the star slate in the, in the challenge for leadership of our party, this star slate has been re-elected over and over again. Since 2010, and we are now in 2024. So see the stars, how bright they shine. Congrats again, stars, in this election. <laughs> On Saturday, June 15, 24, the great members of our party once more elected the star team, endorsed by me, your duly elected political leader, by a massive landslide. The slate, so the slate, star slate won. The star team received 77% of the vote. The other slate received 23% of the vote. These results are in line with the historical results of our internal elections, similar to 2015 results. 
It shows that the vast majority of the membership who voted in these eternals have maintained their confidence in the leadership of the UNC. <laughs> this is a power of the great democratic principles that the UNC embodies. One man, one woman, one vote. And the majority vote by our members is the final decision maker. The membership has spoken resoundingly. And so, as I said before, this has been our sixth internal election under my watch. In all my years, I said it before, this was the worst, most destructive campaign waged by any slate I have ever witnessed since 2015. Well, 2010, 2015, and coming down road six. The seventh would have been in 2010 when I was not the leader. Has been the worst I've witnessed. But you know what? The election results are now official. The time has come for our party to move forward from these internal elections. <laughs> we are all UNC members, and there is a space and a place a space and a place for every single UNC member sharing our values. We are all UNC. There is room for all. Members and supporters of all slates must now move on together for the greater good of the party and ultimately for the greater good of our nation. Supporters of both slates must now work together. All anger, bitterness, or hurt should be forgiven. I know it may take some time, which is the nature of life. There will be ups and downs all the time in our lifetime, but there will always be happiness, and therefore anger must not be there. We must always be able to love and forgive. I was seen in this party for many years, been here many years. This party is 35 years old, and I have seen in the time that I've joined this party, I've seen the fallout with Mr. Robinson. You all remember that? The loss of government due to a fight because of the fight between Mr. Pandey and Mr. Maraj and that team unit. You all remember that? We lost the government. We saw the separation of Mr. Pandey and Mr. Dukaran. We saw my challenge to Mr. Pandey. And you saw after that challenge, those who did not support me, I made them big ministers, you know. I brought them in after, I said, because we were all UNC. We are all UNC. We saw the departure of Mr. Warner in 2013. We saw the subsequent internals between 2015 and now. As I said, this has been the worst of all. Throughout all of these events, the UNC has survived, and we have always moved on. The UNC is bigger than any individual or ego. The UNC is a belief system. The party will always move forward. And so I can call on all members of each slate and their supporters to now forgive and move forward. I know it may be difficult for some people, but hanging on to anger or hurt will just prolong your mental and emotional anguish. There is a saying, hating someone is like you are drinking poison and you're hoping the other person dies. You are drinking the poison, but you're hoping the other person dies. That hate will only kill you. It is up to each person to determine their way forward. During the campaign when I went down to Oropuch, um Deby High School, Oropuch East to vote, uh, media asked me, you know, so what is the way forward? I said, that depends on the individuals. That depends on those persons who are contesting. It is not up to me. It is how they conduct themselves after the election will determine the way forward. So it's up to each person to determine the way forward. The behavior and actions of members will decide their progression or regression within the party. Agreed? Agreed? The behavior and actions of members will decide their progression or regression. Do you agree with that? 
Yes, is it, it, it depends on you. Each person has that responsibility to do their duty and to do it in the best interests of the party and of the country. That is not for me to decide. Their future is in their hands. Attempts to provoke me or the party, whether inside or outside of the parliament, will not have any effect on me or the forward momentum of the party. Attempts to provoke me or our great party, whether inside the parliament or outside the parliament, will not have any effect on me or the forward momentum of the party. I am not interested in fighting with anyone or any group within the UNC. My focus is on the upcoming general elections. I have been through it all within this party. And over the years, I have learned that pettiness, provocation, and political stunts for attention do not fool the UNC membership. It doesn't fool you. It doesn't fool you. All the stunts for recognition and front page in a newspaper and so on doesn't fool the UNC membership. Will never. Our great membership is very discerning and will continue to hold the party together. Our party is very strong. Never forget that. Our party is very strong. Never, ever forget that. My loyalty has always been and will always be to the rank and file membership of the UNC first and foremost. The UNC always comes first. The UNC always comes first. No person, no individual is bigger than the party. I have never run this party with any bitterness or anger to anyone, and I will continue to operate with love. MP Munilal fought me in 2015 for leadership. MP Munilal lost, you all remember that? Today, whilst others choose to be bitter and antagonistic, MP Munal chose to accept my offer to work together. Today he is a deputy political leader of our party. Deputy political leader of the party. I too have suffered setbacks along the way, but I have never betrayed my party or held any bitterness. I will remember one year, and I said I should go off script tonight because I want to stay at point. But I remember one year when we were in Mid Center Mall. And I told you what, I will fall along and I'll do what, I'll dust up myself and get up again. That's what I did. I did not fight my party. No woman, no cry. I never fought my party. So I've suffered setbacks, you know, and that's life. We have, as I said, ups and downs. And then it's your behavior and your heart which determines progression or regression. I just kept working for my party and the membership. True UNC members understand that the party comes first before personalities. We must now come together in the real battle. So we fought battles, but now it is war. We have fought battles, but now it is war. Political war. We must gird our loins. We must pick up our armor. We must pick up our tools, our weapons, and get out there to fight. Fight, to fight. Remember that. We must come together in unity, united. United as a party. United, united, united front, I heard your leader say. We must come together united as a country to move this wicked, corrupt <laughs> government. <laughs> so, I said we have fought many battles. Are we ready to fight the political war? Are you ready? We must come together in a real political war to unseat the government in whenever they call the elections. Why do you think Dr. Rowley went down in the family day, and I mentioned when Rudy was talking, a family day where you people fighting and whatever? Yes, I mean, is that real? That's what happened in a family day. Can you imagine when it's not a family day? It's murder upon murder, home invasions, 
criminality at its highest. And that is where we must come together to move these people. Once we move forward together as one body, with one common goal, we'll be successful in all our undertakings. So again today, I ask members and supporters of both slates to move on and let us move forward. Let us move on and let us move forward. I know whilst I'm saying all of that, you want to ask me, you want to know, what about MP Rai Rakbir? This was his behavior in Parliament last, last Friday following the vote. Behavior in Parliament on Friday. Thumbs up to the PNM. Okay? So let's talk about this now. The National Executive has just been sworn in tonight. So we have not caucused on this matter. There are processes outlined within our party's constitution which will attend to this matter. MP Ragbar must be afforded a due process and this will be done fairly according to our constitution. He will be afforded an opportunity to be heard and account for his actions. That is the process under our party's constitution. So that uh, there is no back and forward and bickering and back and all and whatever. The party's constitution clearly provides what must happen in a situation like this. If his actions were an attempt to provoke me and the new Natex into engaging in some type of bacchanal and warfare, then his actions were mistaken. If this is supposed to be the launch pad for another team unity or Ramjak G type bacchanal, just like those, it will go absolutely nowhere. The party has voted in a democratic election and is now focused on that general election. As I said before, the MPs who supported the other slate are welcome to continue working and their future actions will determine their parts forward. Agreed? Their future action. I have no interest in engaging in any bacchanal with anyone. It has never been my way and will never be my way. <clears throat> you know, I have seen this before. I've seen this with previous persons who were rejected by the membership, where they become bitter and turn against the UNC membership. Shrinis don't like to be insulted. If you are hurt and a bit angry about the results, okay, okay. No, the party's constitution will deal with it in due process. That's just being human. Anyone can understand that. But you know, I have a serious problem. Invoking God, morals, values, and country first narratives does not fool anyone in the country. Doesn't fool anyone. The good Lord tells us never call the name of God in vain. Never ever do that. So you're not fooling anyone with that kind of narrative. And you just become a tradition in our party Whenever persons cannot get anything more from the party, they suddenly find God. <laughs> you know? They didn't, they didn't pray all this time, you know, to win. They finally find God when they didn't get what they wanted. They find God and morals and values and love for country, yes. We in the UNC for decades have always been slandered as heathen. Some of us. Slandered as ungodly idolatrous children of a lesser God. That smear is nothing new to us. We continue to move forward. We are all, I tell you, children of God. All children of God. There is a very famous version which I like very much, but I'm not very good in the pronunciation, so I'll translate it for you. It says, Ishwar Allah, Tedinam. And tells you thereafter, it doesn't matter what your name is. Sorry. 
you are still God Almighty. It doesn't matter by which name. And that is why that is part of the plea and play book. That because we look different, because we will worship in different ways. And I think every Trinity worship it every way now. Eh? Because we go to Christian schools, we go to we have our Muslim brothers. My daughter in law is of a Muslim family. My husband is a Presbyterian. And by the way, Daryl is Greg um, Greg Daryl is saying you must take me back to the church in Safari. Presbyterian church. So we are all here. This is what Trinidad is about every see what Morgan Job used to tell me. See grace in every face, not race. See grace because we are all children of God. And we are all, and we always be UNC and proud. We are UNC and proud. We are UNC and proud. I thank you and let me deal with Mr. Jindal now. You all ready for that? Okay. <laughs> OWT will want to hear this, huh? Mr. Jackman grinning from here to here. Last week, we saw the government meeting with an Indian businessman at the Dip Center regarding the Point of Air Refinery. This man is out on bail fighting corruption charges of pay bri paying bribes to government officials in India. So you'll see the uh, whatever it is there. Check the clip. So Mr. Jindal, <laughs> not Munilal as you said, Mr. Jindal, <laughs> out on bail fighting corruption charges of pay paying bribes to government officials in India. When we look at an express article, headline, Rowley unaware, Indian billionaire on corruption charge, Trinidad Express, June 19, 2024, just a few days ago. He say he doesn't know. Let me read from the people. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said yesterday he was totally unaware that billionaire Indian industrialist Naveen Jindal is currently before the courts in India fighting corruption allegations. You believe that? No. Rory claims he was not aware of these charges. But the question which arises is who is vetting these people? Now from the time, from the time, from the time they posted the picture of Mr. Jinnah and Rory in the dip center, I have a member of staff who was so proactive within half hour that is Michael. Give him a round of applause. I didn't even ask Michael. He just did it on his own lonesome. He did a Google and he found all these stories within half hour. You want to tell me an entire cabinet, entire government, with whatever all these agencies, he have all the units, he have SSA and so on. None of them doing a due diligence on people. None of them doing anything. If within half hour we were able to find this on the same day they posted the picture. But the story doesn't there, you know. Who is vetting these people? Who is vetting them? You remember Delcy you mentioned? When Delcy came here during COVID with a, with a team on a sanctioned aircraft, thank you, during COVID, sanctioned aircraft. They are meeting in the Deep center. And Rowley had the goal to tell the country, you know who exposed it? I'll take blame. I exposed him. I exposed it. And I asked, is it true the sanction plane came? Is it true this person, that person, that person? The man went and called a press conference. You remember that? He was stuttering. He couldn't even talk. He was stuttering. Couldn't even talk. And he said, well, he didn't know who was with Delcy. Can you believe that? I was prime minister, sir. I can tell you it don't happen so. People can't just walk in my office. I don't know who come in what. Could be a terrorist. They could be an assassin. Or could be a corrupt person. You do not hold meetings like that. No organization. And you know, with technology now, it's so simple. It's just a simple Google. So it's not like you have employed the whole SSA and the whole national security team. Look, we got it. I said, Michael got it within half hour. Thank you, Michael. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. And then, remember Delcy. And what about when Prime Minister Rowley returned to Trinidad, wherever he went, I don't know. And he made a big announcement 
Bill Gates was going to give the country money. <laughs> Bill Gates giving him a billion or zillion, I don't know how much it was. But again, did you do any due diligence before you made that big announcement, man? You are making, letting everybody take you for a fool. He is a fool. Maybe you are a fool. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you are. <laughs> so, anyhow, they seem to vet nothing. You know, up to now, we don't know this Bridgeman's deal, who the owners are. Up to don't, don't know about that thing leaking off Tobago, nobody knows. We do no due diligence on matters and so many others. So let's look again at an article dated 23rd January 2024. In something called a Deccan Herald Indian newspaper, it tells us Jindal is facing corruption and money, money laundering charges in India. Let's put up that clip, please, Kivan. It's up there. I'm going to quote from that story. The judge directed Jindal to furnish a fixed deposit of rupees one crore and not to tamper with any evidence or try to influence any witness in any manner. One of the cases in which Jindal is an accused pertains to irregularities in the allocation of the Amarkonda Muruga Dangal coal block in Jack Han, maybe bad pronunciation, never mind. It's on the screen. And he's been investigated by the Central Bureau of Investigation. A separate money laundering case has been pulled by the Enforcement Directorate in relation to the allocation of the coal block. A third case, there's a one, you know, it's three, and maybe more will come after we deal with the point of pay refinery. After he deals with it, there'll be more to come. The third case being pulled by the CBI relates to the alleged irregularities in the allocation of Ultan North Coal Block in Madhya Pradesh. Three. Talk about corruption and money laundering. As one of you told us, you come to Parliament, but whistleblower on, on Friday. I'm on Monday meeting you now. And you don't know. You're telling the media when they ask you, I don't know. But look, the story gets better, you know, or worse. Rowley's all is up and down the country crying corruption and thief. And now saying, it does not matter that Jindal is before the court. Yes, he said, he, they said they're not taking down Stuart and said that too. Yes, they said they will make a decision by August, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Something, yes, for elections. Something is very strange with this deal. The government has claimed that Jindal has access to the crude oil for the refinery. I want to ask you this. Where did you really find Jindal? Did you find him in India? Or did you find him in Venezuela? Where did you find him? You know, India has one of the largest refineries in the world. And they have a drop of oil. They import oil to refine. So when Rory shut down this refinery, he said, we don't have oil, we have to import oil. Damn foolishness. Total nonsense. Foolishness. Some other ulterior motive took him along to shut down that refinery. Let's move along. He's saying Jindal has access to the crude oil for the refinery. So where is Jindal coming in from? I want you to look at another article. March 21, 2024. Business Standard Newspaper, India. Jindal Steel and Power takes on ops at Venezuela's largest iron ore mill. Takes on Venezuela's largest iron ore mill. Okay? March 21, 2024. The article, and I quote, Jindal Steel and Power Limited has taken over operations at Venezuela's largest iron ore complex the first for a private-run firm in the South American country's heavy industry in over a decade, just months after striking the deal with Nicolas Maduro government. Story tickens. In March this year, story tells us that article, a company associated with Jindal took over the largest iron ore complex in Venezuela. What has been happening is that Mr. Jindal has been border hopping between Venezuela and Trinidad. 
cutting deals between the Maduro and Rowley governments. Now, I remember we had a, something with this before with someone named Wilma Ruperti. Yes. You were all shipping. Yes. You all remember that? Yes. Whose oil was that? Exactly. Cross-border oil. Where did that oil come from? I tell you, we can't find the owner of that to be good. But so many things they can't seem to find. But they got come in the parliament and talk about whistleblower and corruption. Running up and down. But they will not do their own. So what we are seeing is a Venezuela, Trinidad, India connection. Was it the Venezuelans who put the Rory government on to Mr. Jindal to get the petrotrain refinery? So I'll come back to that. Did any member of the government meet Mr. Jindal in Venezuela before he came to Trinidad? Look at this um, clip with Stuart Young and Jindal. This is off the Ministry of Energy website. Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries, Minister Young meets with Jindal Steel and Power, India. But where does he meet them? In Trinidad. When? Last year. Last year. Look at it. And this is on the Energy Ministry's website. I'm going to read it. Minister of Energy and Energy Industries and Minister of the Office of the Prime Minister, Honorable Stuart Young, MP, along with Deputy PS Car Carinza Tulsi, Receive an introductory courtesy call from home, Mr. Naveen Jindal, Chairman of Jindal Steel and Power at the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries, International Waterfront Complex. Head office today, here it is, Monday, 27 March 2023. Monday, 27 March 2023, over 15 months ago. And you now come to tell me you don't know this man in corruption charges? You never even had a whole year and more, 15 months to, to, to do the lens. You bring this man in the center making a puppy show and a fool of yourself and embarrassing Trinidad and Tobago. A whole 15 months, 27 March 2023. And this is off Minister Young's Ministry of Energy website. Website. Mr. Jindal visited Trinidad and met with Young on March 27, 2023. It is on that website of the Energy Ministry. Mr. Jindal returned 15 months later in June 2024 and met with Prime Minister Rowley and others. So this government has been meeting with him for 15 months, but pretended, pretended they're only now meeting him for the first time. Don't let these people chain us up and fool us again with that refinery man. They did for the last election in 2020. That's what they did. They're going to sell it to the OW to you. Lie, lie, lie upon lie. And here they are. Jinder was here. March 23. When did Rowley go to India? When did he go this last time? May 2024. A whole year after Jindal came and met them. Rowley claims he doesn't know about Jindal's corruption charges because Jindal's visit, here there's another line. They say the visit was as a result of Rowley's trip to India. You hear lie again? More damn liars call that. Blasted lies to fool the people of our land. He said that Jindal come down here because Rowley went up there. But this man was here when? In March 2023, meeting your government. You know, Rowley in the energy minister, Stuart Young, is in the pocket of Rowley. You think he didn't tell Rowley Jindal come down here since last year? Who you fool in back pocket or front pocket, whichever, as JJ said, I love that. Small crapo, big crapo. Same, <laughs> same and flush salt. <laughs> same salt. But look at that too. Young is also, Barry's reminded me, a minister in the office of the Prime Minister, the Gary Sobers of Prime Minister Rowley. And you didn't tell him that man come here last year. So why are you lying to the country? Something is, something more is in the mortar than the vessel. Something far, far more. So how is it possible? You didn't know this man on corruption charges 
because you say me jindal and may this year when you went up the road and then you bring him back here invite him here and all those lies how is that possible somebody have a time machine this man could lie is the crude oil that mr jindal is sourcing for the refinery venezuelan crude so he's saying we could give jindal the same we could guess what he could get oil we don't have oil because they underproduced for the broad production to the lowest it has ever been in how long, Mr. Jackman? Decades. Yes, decades. If under this government, the production has fallen, tremendously fallen. So he said, we don't have oil, shut down the refinery. And look what Jindal is going to get oil from where now? Venezuela. It's this sanctioned oil. I warn citizens, this government is taking us down a dangerous path. This refinery deal is a corrupt cook-up between the Maduro narco government and this government with a corrupt businessman from India. Jindal is a go-between for Venezuela and Trinidad governments. It is a Maduro government who introduced him to Maroli and they are behind the acquisition of the Point of Pair refinery. Through Jindal, Maduro government will process Venezuelan crude here at Point of Pair and escape the US sanctions or try to escape U.S. sanctions. This Rowley government is part of a scheme that Trinidad and Tobago will pay a serious price for. So we must do what? We must pick up, pick up our weapons, put on our boots, gird our loins, put on our armor, and go out for that political war, that great war that is coming, to move out this wicked, incompetent, corrupt government. So now that the internal election is over, and now that we have sworn in the new NATEX, we are going to immediately get on with the business of winning the next general elections. We have a team who has worked really hard. We have so many of you who are not on the NATEX, activists, councillors, all of you out there in this great party have worked so hard. We must make that greater work still because victory will be ours. Victory will be ours. So when Rory goes down to Skinner Park, when he pull out, the, pull out the, the date may come out in the night at midnight, uh, and something before dawn, Rory, you don't remember what happens at dawn? The sun rises. The sun rises. Sun rises. Every day, the sun rises at dawn. And come that dawn, we will get out there with our voting fingers. We'll get early to those poll stations and cast a vote for the rising sun. Vote for the UNC. I had already opened nominations for a great party for the general election. So I think one of you told me they won't step behind. And those nominations are there. We'll begin our screening processes. I think we got over 200, was it? 200 persons applied. We will consider if to reopen the nominations given the time frame. But we will have to start the screening for those who have, uh, <coughs> those who have filed their nominations, yes, thank you. And as I close, I tell you, the elections are over for the parties internal. The time has come for us to get ready for the general. Yes. We must never ever become complacent. In this upcoming elections, every single vote will count. And we need you, we need your strength we need your resilience. We need your committed effort. Now, I don't believe, you know, Rory went down there, I think it's after the unions came out on Wednesday and hit him hard, they slapped him down real hard. Let's give the unions a round of applause. These are people who are committed to the workers, to the working classes who will give, the, what you say, what we all say, blood, sweat, and tears. Wait, blood, sweat, and tears in service to the working class. And so we thank them for their comments on the last day. And I don't think he will call elections before August, and I'll tell you why. Because he said something on that very day, that fun-filled family day, he said. A decision on Jindal will be taken in August. So what, are you going to call election and then go make deal with Jindal? So we'll wait and see. I suspect, and because I say this, he do everything to make sure it doesn't happen. So they will want to read another budget. They will want to do a budget in September of this year. 
to come and promise you and fool you and try to fool you again. But this time, the people will not be fooled, Mr. Rowley. You will not get through. You've lied too many times. So we wait. And I make the point, no matter when that date is announced, the sun will rise again on dawn of that morning. As of now, your new Natex will be working hard to make this mission a reality for the people of our beloved country. And as I always tell you, you will have leaders, and you had leaders before me. You will have leaders after me. But you will never have a leader who loves you as much as I do. Thank you, God bless you, and reach home safely. Thank you all so much.